After serving only 25 years of an 80-year sentence, a man convicted of murder is set to be released, but the victim's family is hoping the governor can stop that from happening. Also, local police are preparing as thousands of demonstrators intend to protest the possible overturning of Roe v. Wade in downtown Madison this weekend. And excitement building as the Bucks gear up for Game 6 against the Boston Celtics tonight. Plus, another day of record high temperatures, but severe storms could break that cycle. You're watching New News 3 now at 5, and let's get right to our first warm forecast. A weather alert day today. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti is on the weather patio with the details. Gary? Yeah, after a fourth day of record uh, heat and humidity, and, and the humidity is just a little bit lower, so we're waiting for the storms to get going. But let's start out by taking a look at low temperatures this morning. Here in Madison, 71 degrees. That was a record for the warmest low temperature for the day. And so far, our high temperature officially has hit 92. 91 is what it shows there. But uh, between hours, it actually did get up to 92 degrees, and that broke a, a record for today by 4 degrees. Current temperatures still in the lower 90s through most of southern Wisconsin. A little bit of a lake breeze keeping temperatures in the 80s closer to Lake Michigan. More importantly, though, the dew point temperatures are down. They're in the upper 50s. It's still kind of humid, but not as humid as it has been the last couple of days, and the air actually dries out to the west. So the thunderstorms have had a hard time getting going. Uh, right now, heat index readings right around 90 in Madison. But you can see a visible cloud track. We've had sunshine for much of the day. Thunderstorms are just starting to develop across parts of northern Illinois and far southern Wisconsin. Storm Prediction Center does have us under a level 2 or slight risk of severe thunderstorms for this evening, with high winds being the main threat. And you can see on top track. The storm's just starting to fire up pretty quickly now across western Illinois into far southern Wisconsin. Looks like one little cell trying to get going over parts of Rock County but not having a lot of success. That will change over the next hour or two. Look for scattered showers and thunderstorms tonight. Temperatures tomorrow still warm, a little less humid, high 82, above normal but not near a record, and then temperatures will drop back into the 60s and 70s for next week. I'll have more on that in the forecast in just a few minutes. All right, Gary, thank you. Before the storms begin, News 3 wants to make sure you're prepared download our first worn forecast weather app so you know when severe weather is heading your way. It has hourly forecasts and the latest radar. You can download it for free in your phone's app store. Just search WISC weather. A Wisconsin family hopes their persistence literally showing up at the governor's door will pay off. Just 25 years into an 80 year murder sentence, Douglas Balsewicz could be released on parole as soon as this week. But Governor Evers is putting pressure on his own parole board to block that from happening thanks in part to that meeting. Political reporter Will Keneally has more on where this stands now. Will? That's right. So Governor Evers has limited authority in this regard. It's not like pardons where Evers can do essentially what he wants. The decision of whether Balsewicz is released on parole is solely in the hands of the parole commissioner and his chair, John Tate, Evers' own appointee. In the letter today, Evers asked Tate to rescind the parole order, which came after an hour-long meeting with the victim, Johanna Balsewicz's family. In 1997, Douglas Balsewicz murdered his wife, Johanna. Johanna's family says they relived the murder all over again when they learned Douglas might be released as early as next week. We found out from word on the street someone that was privy to information that he was getting out and they felt so strongly about it, they weren't even a member of our family, that they had to let us know. They quickly pushed Evers' office to block Douglas's release, meeting with the governor himself this morning. We just don't want Doug on the streets. A reversal of this parole, he has not served enough time and we're all scared out here. The result of that meeting, a letter Evers sent to the head of his parole commission asking him to change his mind. But John Tate told the Racine Journal Times it likely couldn't be overturned. Douglas would have to do something to cause that parole to be revoked. We're just hoping and praying and see where it goes from here. In his letter, Evers laid out reasoning to delay the release, saying Johanna's family did not get enough opportunity to provide input. We got the letter from the Department of Corrections stating his May 17th release yesterday. Yesterday. After calling his office all week. Now in the hands of Tate, Douglas could be released as soon as next Tuesday. So we placed multiple requests today with the Parole Commission, but have not heard back yet. On their response to the governor's letter, 
nor has the governor's office heard back from the parole commission by this afternoon. Will, thank you. Likely thousands of people, but hopefully all of them peaceful. That is how Madison's police chief is viewing this weekend. An abortion rights protest planned here and in dozens of cities across the country. Just a few weeks back, we saw an abortion rights protest that certainly was wrapping up within a couple of hours after a march down State Street ahead of another planned rally. Tomorrow, our Brad Hamilton is live downtown where preparations are already in place. Brad? Susan, Police Chief Sean Barnes says that he's actually working with several different agencies to make sure that everyone is safe this weekend, including beefing up his own patrol. Now, groups that are speaking out against the reversal of Roe v. Wade have confirmed that they will be protesting this Saturday across the country. And Madison Police have confirmed that one is going to be scheduled tomorrow at 4 o'clock right here at the Capitol. MBD expects that there will be several thousand people. That's in addition to many people coming downtown after UW's commencement ceremony. Many business owners near this square actually didn't really want to talk on camera today. The one who did says that he's not worried about the crowds or the conflict. Instead, he just wants to make sure that everyone who wants to be downtown to peacefully protest or shop can. The biggest thing is when people hear about an event like this or any uh, protest or, or march, whatever, uh, people are afraid to come downtown. Um, because they're not sure of what's going to happen, especially after the event a couple of years ago where everything bro broke loose. Chief Barnes said in a statement this morning that his department supports the right granted to people through the First Amendment and is hopeful that all gatherings this weekend will again be peaceful. And coming up at 6, we actually just got a statement from Capitol Police who is also going to be working with Chief Barnes and Madison Police. We'll have that coming up again at 6. All right, Brad, help live downtown. Brad, thank you. A group that helps women pay for abortions in Wisconsin is exploring new partnerships with out-of-state groups if Roe v. Wade is overturned. The Women's Medical Fund covers costs like travel and child care, as well as helping fund abortions themselves. Naomi Coles is here with more. As you might know, if Roe is overturned, abortions become illegal across the board in Wisconsin. That's because of an old law banning them for everything but saving a mother's life. That would leave Illinois and Minnesota as, quote, haven states, whose state laws would still protect abortion access if the U.S. Supreme Court goes forward with that leaked draft opinion overturning the landmark decision. At that point, the Women's Medical Fund tells me they would shift gears to developing partnerships with groups in those states to help women travel to get their procedures. Wisconsin residents who go to neighboring states like Minnesota or Illinois will be able to connect with abortion funds that have the local expertise, relationship, knowledge. Those partnerships will include things like pairing our funding together, making sure that people from Wisconsin who are going to clinics in Illinois or Minnesota are still able to have the gaps in their costs for abortions paid fully. The WMF's president, Lucy Marshall, says they're already hearing from concerned clients. I'll be talking to her on For the Record, that's after Face the Nation this Sunday, about how her group is further helping women as Roe appears poised to be overturned. How many women has this organization already helped up to this point? You looked at some of the numbers. I did. In 2021, they helped 1,500 women get abortions. That was a 30% increase from the previous year. So their organization is in demand. So far this year, right through mid-April, they've helped 500 women get abortions. Now, to put that in a little bit of context, in the state of Wisconsin, total, there were about 6,500 abortions last year. All right. Naomi Coles reporting tonight. Naomi, thank you. It has been nearly five years now since a deadly explosion at Diddy and Milling in Cambria. Five employees were killed. Now the company has been federally indicted for crimes related to that blast. The 36-page indictment alleges the company failed to keep up with cleanings that were required by federal law and then falsified records saying they did them. OSHA says dust filters that weren't properly ventilated led to the explosion. And today, the company releasing a statement reacting to that indictment saying, quote, we are disappointed. The government has decided to pursue these unwarranted charges. What happened on May 31st, five years ago, was a horrible accident, not a criminal act. For more details on those charges and our coverage from the incident back in 2017, go to channel3000.com.
CDC.com. Seven Wisconsin counties have now reached high levels of COVID-19 community spread. That's the level the CDC recommends everyone start wearing masks again indoors. Affected counties are Kenosha, Racine, Vernon, Monroe, La Crosse, Rusk, and Barron counties. Dane County still in the medium level of spread. While COVID cases are increasing, state health officials say the number of deaths and hospitalizations are not. And with more Americans now testing positive for COVID-19 at home, it's becoming more difficult to monitor infection rates. And that's why wastewater sampling is more important than ever. Researchers at the Columbia University Medical Center are studying how wastewater can detect new outbreaks and surges. Hundreds of communities, including some here in Wisconsin, are using the technique with full support from the CDC. More than 400 testing sites across the U.S. are enrolled in a CDC program that allows states to compare their sewage data. The Milwaukee Bucks hoping to build off their momentum from that big win on Wednesday to inch closer to another NBA title. They're hoping to put away the Boston Celtics tonight and move on to face Miami in the Eastern Conference Finals. But first, you've got to win game six tonight in Milwaukee. And excitement is building in the Deer District. Here's a live look at the plaza. Officials say so many fans are expected tonight they had to set a capacity limit of 11,000 people in that area. But our Jordan Reed is one of them and she joins us now with a preview of the game. Jordan? Yeah, so one win. That's all the Bucks need to send the Celtics packing and punch their ticket to the conference finals. Now, the reality of tonight, that was only made possible because of what the Bucks did just a couple nights ago in Boston. And leaving it all on the court, and I mean leaving it all, from Giannis's game high 40 to actual blood and sweat. Now, picking up that win, taking the series lead on the road, that means in just a couple hours, it could be the first Bucks and six of this year's playoffs. But this team, you know them. They're not getting ahead of themselves. We can get too high to low. Like we were up seven or ten in the previous game, we we lost it. Uh, they were up, they lost this one. Like we just keep going back and forth, you know. And at the end of the day, like um, we can get too high for this. You know, obviously it's great to win the game and great to go back home and feel good about ourselves. But uh, the job, the job's not done. And tip-off is coming up at 6.30. We will have plenty more on Game 6 tonight at 10, including highlights and post-game reactions from the team. <laughs> Jordan right. is here. I thought she was there. Yeah, huge game tonight, Jordan. Yeah. Thank you. And next at 5, severe storms bring another alert day to southern Wisconsin. And Ukraine says Russia has suffered major losses in East Ukraine. We'll have details on that when we return. And later, it's been a growing issue across the state at 6, how the Little League umpire shortage could impact games this summer. Heading to the weekend with strong gains for the markets. The Dow is surging more than 465 points and NASDAQ up 434. S&P gains 94 and we'll be right back. The best mattress deals in Wisconsin start now at Ashley. This Memorial Day, save $1,000 on Sealy and Serta. Save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic. Plus, get $300 in free furniture. Doorbusters up to 60% off. And special financing for 60 months, starting right now. I'm Sarah Godlewski. I'm at the Supreme Court where it looks like Ron Johnson is going to get exactly what he wants. Overturning Roe v. Wade, reinstating Wisconsin's cruel abortion ban, and putting doctors in jail. But that's not what Wisconsinites want. We don't want politicians making health care choices for women. I'm Sarah Godlewski, and I approve this message because as your senator, I will never sit by and allow our rights to be stripped away. Join me. Let's fight back and defeat Ron Johnson. Culver's couldn't have started anywhere but in Sauk City, Wisconsin. Still today, we are a family restaurant. Here, nearby farms grow the food we eat, smiles are contagious, and everyone is someone's neighbor. It's a place where our love of fresh food is as strong as our love for each other. It's a feeling of welcome you'll notice the moment you stop by. Because where we come from has made us who we are. And for that, we couldn't be more proud. Welcome to Delicious. Sunroom saving season is here. Four Seasons has a great way to beat the backyard blues and save 20 to 25%. Let's cover your deck with a screen room or Three Seasons porch. We can turn your screen porch into an enclosed screen porch or put a pergola on your patio. All on sale now. Let Coolview show you how to tame your backyard and improve your lifestyle. Call for a free backyard survey, design, and quote. Get a new view from Coolview. Impatience is a virtue.
You know what you want. Waiting isn't an option. New Balance Madison. We got now. The savings do not get better than this. Ashley's Memorial Day sale starts now. Holiday doorbusters are up to 64% off, plus up to an additional 10% off at checkout. Furnish entire rooms for only $14 per month and special financing for 60 months. Starting right now. Tonight at 6, the family of a murdered mom in 1997 is asking Governor Evers to intervene in the convicted murderer's early release. But the governor said it's out of his hands. So what's next for the family? We'll have a full report at 6. Need to know what the traffic is like before you hit the road? Get the Channel 3000 app now, and I'll tell you where the trouble spots are and how to get around them. The Channel 3000 app. Get it now. Powered by News 3 Now. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. A top U.S. military leader spoke with his Russian counterpart today for the first time since Russia invaded Ukraine. It comes as Ukraine says Russia has suffered some heavy losses in the eastern part of Ukraine. Skylar Henry with the latest from Washington. A humanitarian center in the Kharkiv region of Ukraine lay in ruins following an overnight strike. Officials say the center contained supplies for civilians in the area. Elsewhere, Ukrainian officials say their forces stopped Russian troops from crossing a river in the Donbas region. They say this footage shows a damaged bridge and several destroyed Russian military vehicles. They're putting up a very stiff resistance in the Donbas and in the south. Um, um, they have prevented the Russians from achieving virtually any of their strategic objectives thus far in the, in the war. With Ukraine's defense minister acknowledging there is no swift end to the war in sight, U.S. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin spoke with his Russian counterpart today for the first time since the invasion. Secretary urged an end to the conflict in Ukraine, and he emphasized the importance of maintaining communication. Also Friday, Ukrainian authorities began the first war crimes trial of the conflict. A 21-year-old captured Russian soldier is accused of fatally shooting an unarmed civilian in the early days of the war. Skyler Henry, CBS News. Washington. As Sweden and Finland consider joining NATO, Turkey is opposed. Their president says the Nordic nations support Kurdish militants that he considers terrorists. President Biden says he supports those countries' right to determine their own futures. Severe storms could finally break our heat. We'll find out when. Here's Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. We may be starting to see these severe thunderstorms develop to our south over the next couple of hours. Let's start out by taking a look at the unofficial record highs so far today today. Here in Madison, 92 degrees. That broke a record high by 4 degrees, but records also fell on Rockford, Illinois, Green Bay, Wausau. All of those places hit 92 degrees. La Crosse hit 90 for their record, and Chicago tied a record at 89 degrees. Uh, here in Madison, that's the fourth day in a row. We've set record high temperatures and also record warm low temperatures. And you can see a lot of these records have fallen by a big amount. Yesterday by 8 degrees, today 4 degrees, 6 degrees on Wednesday, and 3 degrees on uh, Tuesday. I mean, that is pretty significant heat compared to what we've seen in 150 years worth of weather records. But now, this evening, we still have an alert day in the forecast with the possibility for some isolated severe thunderstorms. Hail and high winds, the main threats, actually more high winds than anything else, uh, maybe some heavy downpours. You can see thunderstorms or showers trying to get going here. They haven't started producing lightning yet, but farther to the south and west, notice we have severe thunderstorms over parts of west central Illinois. This is a tornado warning uh, with a uh, confirmed tornado near Monmouth, Illinois. Uh, so again, and the potential there for some isolated severe thunderstorms. This is not really a big tornado producing situation. These tornadoes tend to be relatively weak if they occur at all. But again, strong winds as these storms collapse will probably be the main threat. So again, there's that tornado warning for Warren County because of a confirmed tornado there. This is part of a line of thunderstorms starting to get organized here just ahead of a cold front coming in from the west. The air is less humid than it was yesterday, so we're not seeing widespread thunderstorm development yet. But again, the potential is there. That's why the storm Prediction Center has that slight risk of severe thunderstorms, basically from Madison southward with the possibility for an isolated severe storm elsewhere. Temperatures are still unusually hot for this time of year. The hottest weather over our part of the country, temperatures around 90 through much of Wisconsin to the south. It's actually more humid.
good, and that's keeping temperatures down just a bit, but still in the upper 80s. Farther to the north and west, temperatures are starting to cool off, and that's what we're looking for to break our heat for the weekend. And notice the difference in dew points. 59 here, kind of humid. The 60s and 70s farther to the south, but notice the air is much less humid out to the west. Dew points in the 40s and even 30s, so that means the humidity levels will drop as we head into the weekend. We still could see a chance for a shower or thunderstorm. The jet stream basically from south to north, that's just why it's just pumping the heat into our part of the country, but eventually as that pattern starts to shift off to the east, the upper level winds become more westerly, the temperatures become more moderate, and we see more uh, seasonal temperatures for uh, the, the rest of the weekend and into next week. You can see the cold front coming through, the showers and thunderstorms developing right along that front with the wind shift behind it. Already La Crosse has dropped to 83, temperatures from the 70s to the west, and notice the dew points dropping out to the west as well. That will probably put an end to the shower and thunderstorm chances sometime later tomorrow morning. So for tonight, showers, some thunderstorms, some of those could have gusty winds and some heavy downpours low at, 50, at 63. Tomorrow, a chance for a shower or thunderstorm in the morning, then partly sunny and warm. Less humid, though, with a high temperature of 82. On future track, again, those showers and thunderstorms popping up this evening, continuing overnight. Low temperatures, lower 60s. If there is a shower or thunderstorm, it's early tomorrow morning, then partly sunny, highs in the lower 80s. Tomorrow night, a slight chance for an evening shower or thunderstorm, and then a chance of showers and thunderstorms on Sunday. High temperatures will be around 70 degrees. Rainfall amounts will be spotty. Some areas could pick up an inch or two. Other areas nearby, less than a quarter of an inch. Just depends on where that band of storms eventually ends up. After that, temperature is much more temperate. 70 for Sunday and Monday. We're in the 60s, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then back into the 70s with a brief shot of uh, 80s early next weekend before thunderstorm chances start to turn us cooler for the following week. As we check out first warm traffic, it's a Friday in the Beltline. Here's the view at Park Street. You can see traffic starting to pick up. It was pretty heavy before. Now the delays start from around John Nolan Drive back to uh, Verona Road westbound. We're seeing delays from around Todd Drive to Park Street. Travel times right now. Eastbound Beltline is a 24-minute commute. University Avenue to the interstate, 19 minutes back in the westbound direction. I-3990 Beltline to Janesville is 25 minutes. US-12 Midland to Sauk City is 17 minutes. And downtown to Sun Prairie, East Washington Avenue and US-151 will take you 18 minutes. That's your news three now for sworn traffic. All right, thank you, Gary. As we start to get outdoors, as the weather warms up, it's also time to be aware of ticks. We'll have some important reminders next at 5. News 3 Now First Born Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Your John Deere is here. Get yours during our Green Tag Sales event. Get your new full-size, mid-size, or HBX Gator with 0% for 36 months. Get a John Deere now and... Power up at Sloan's. Get your Gator running. Test drive one today at Sloan's. Save big with Menards and get 11% off everything for your project. Spend less time maintaining your deck and more time relaxing with Ultra Deck Low Maintenance Composite Decking. We carry everything you'll need to complete your new deck project. It gives you the look of real wood without the upkeep and features a hidden fastening system for a clean, professional look. Get 11% off Ultra Deck and everything in the store now at Menards. strength and financial guidance of Prudential to achieve their dreams. Who's your rock? I just scratch my head over these career politicians. They get in there and they, they, they just never want to leave. I'm going to give this my all for four years, work very hard. I'm going to do it for the greater good of all the people of Wisconsin, not the special interest. I think the lobbyists are not going to like me at all. They're going to be very frustrated. I'm not beholden to them. Didn't take any money from them, won't take any money from them. I'm going to do what's right for all the people of Wisconsin. Jim Michaels for governor. Hey, everybody, who's coming to the big show? It's Fetty! Saturday, June 11th at Ho-Chunk Gaming and Casino in Wisconsin Dells. An all-day outdoor event. Come out for classic cars, trucks, and motorcycles during the day and stay for the concert at night. Featuring country superstar Trace Atkins, Runaway Jew, The Mascot Theory, and Bev Killian. All benefit.
benefiting heat and housing for heroes. Visit VetAWI.com for details and to purchase tickets for Trace Access. What's at the top of your home improvement list? Did you say better insulation? Because better insulation makes everything you do in your home better. Even just walking in the front door on a hot day. So get ready for summer now with USA Premium Foam. It keeps the hot air out, the cool air in, and your electric bills lower. Call now before our busy summer season and get $500 off whole home insulation. But that ends May 31st. USA Insulation. Your John Deere is here. Get yours during our Green Tag Sales event. Right now, get 0% for 84 months on a 1 Series. Get a John Deere now and... Power up with Sloan's. Run with a 1 Family Series. Test drive one at Sloan's. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Welcome back. It can affect your joints, your heart, your nervous system, but it's unknown exactly how many people get Lyme disease in the U.S. Now, the CDC estimates a half a million Americans are treated for it every year. In today's Health Minute, Mandy Gaither has more on how to prevent the illness. They're creepy, crawly, and packed with potentially dangerous bacteria that can lead to Lyme disease. Deer ticks are three millimeters in size, so they're tiny, and if they bite us, it really doesn't hurt. It takes a deer tick at least 36 hours to transmit the illness. Dr. Dan Sullivan with Cleveland Clinic says if a deer tick is removed within 36 hours of it latching on, the threat of Lyme disease is smaller. But if the tick isn't removed within that time period, the risk rises. It's a little red spot where the bite took place, but then the redness expands. So it looks a little bit like a bullseye. Other initial symptoms of Lyme disease can include fever, chills, headache, muscle and joint aches, and swollen lymph nodes. A doctor can prescribe an antibiotic to knock out the infection at the earliest stages. If left untreated, Lyme disease can affect the heart and nervous system. The best part about Lyme disease is it's preventable. CDC data shows spring and summer are a tick's favorite time of year to bite. The creatures like to hide in high grass. Keeping lawns mowed and hedges trimmed are key. When outdoors, especially in a wooded area, keep your skin covered with clothing. Wear insect repellent with DEET. Then do a tick check. Look behind knees in the scalp and underarms. Ticks should be carefully removed with tweezers. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. If you find a tick and you're uncertain how long it's been there, Dr. Sullivan says go to see a doctor. Blood tests can confirm whether Lyme disease is present. We're back with a final check of your first worn forecast after a short break. Big Memorial Day savings start now at Furniture and Appliance Mart. Save up to 40% off doorbusters and special buys. Plus get special no interest financing for 12 months. And it's starting right now at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley off the Beltline in East Springs Drive. The best things in life are free. Just wait until he hears about free installation from Feldco. Free installation? Are you kidding me? Yeah! Free installation on windows, siding, doors, and roofing. Plus, no interest for one year. That's something to get excited about. Free installation ends soon. Call now. All quality windows, siding, and doors. Call 866 for Feltco. At McGann Furniture in Baraboo, we know that hardworking people want the most value for their money. When you shop at McGann, we've already sorted out and selected the brands that we feel offer you the most bang for your buck. From young couples just starting out to senior citizens, we offer a huge selection at prices that will fit your budget. Plus, most purchases include free delivery and setup. And remember, at McGann, we don't raise our prices only to lower them later for a sale. Discover the difference at McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo. Love that Chevy Blazer. That's our next SUV. Love that Equinox. That's our next SUV. Nice Trailblazer. It was love at first sight. What? The Chevy family of SUVs. Find new options. Find new roads. It's Chevy Sport Utility Spring. Well-qualified buyers can get 0% financing or get a $1,000 cash allowance on all 2022 Equinox models. Chevrolet, the number one selling brand in Wisconsin. your energy, giving back to your community, fueling your drive to deliver hope for neighbors in need, 
At Alliant Energy, we're creating more clean, renewable energy every single day to power what matters to you. Because even during the most powerful moments in our lives, we're not thinking about power. We're thinking about a brighter future. Alliant Energy, powering beyond. Violent and destructive riots in Kenosha. The Waukesha Christmas Parade tragedy. Record high homicides in Milwaukee. From defunding our police to releasing violent felons with low or no bail. Liberal Democrats have created the worst crime wave in decades. Senator Ron Johnson is standing with our brave law enforcement officers to keep Wisconsin families safe. And he wants to keep violent criminals behind bars where they belong. I'm Ron Johnson and I approve this message. The savings do not get better than this. Ashley's Memorial Day sale starts now. Holiday doorbusters are up to 64% off, plus up to an additional 10% off at checkout. Furnish entire rooms for only $14 per month and special financing for 60 months, starting right now. On this Friday night, Congress launches an investigation into America's growing baby formula shortage. We talked to frustrated parents who said it took them weeks to find formula for their infants. Plus, the concern tonight in Texas as a massive manhunt is underway for an escaped inmate who stabbed a prison guard. And we go on the road with a love story for the ages. That's tonight on the CBS Evening News. Gary's back, final check of the forecast. Yeah, the storm's just starting to fire up now in a line from just south of Madison back into uh, parts of Illinois. Right now, the strongest storms, uh, severe thunderstorm and tornado warnings in effect for parts of west central Illinois, but we'll watch the storms move into southern uh, Greene County in the next hour. CBS Evening News is next, and we're back in 30 minutes for News 3 Now at 6.